be an hour and a half tonight. Um, I know we had a very, very long planning session last night, the BIA. So we were here till 10. So I think everybody's a bit tired tonight. So good, good things are happening though. So let's uh, get started if you guys don't mind. Um, welcome everyone to the BIA meeting. It's uh, 7.03, we're gonna get started. And I'm gonna start out, does everybody have a copy of tonight's agenda? Uh, everyone's sort of waving, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Jenna Oda, you guys have it too? <laughs> okay, great. Uh, I would share my screen, but that's one I'll just read from here. So we're gonna start with the approval of the agenda. So be it resolved that the Cremor BIA uh, Management Board hereby approves the agenda dated February 9th, 2021 as presented. So I need someone to put forward the motion and someone to second it. Heather, did you wanna put the motion forward to approve the agenda? Um, I forgot to read the agenda. I only read the minutes. Okay. Sarah, can I take something off this week's agenda? Certainly can. Can we what just is, not huh? talk about the Santa Claus parade for no, this? No, I can't. <laughs> I second that. You know why? I have an update. I have an update. Okay, because I don't, and I was going to be embarrassed when I had to report it. So I just was like, let's just not talk about that. <laughs> I have breaking news on that. So stand by. <laughs> okay, I thought I might have had to follow up, and I didn't. So okay, I did. <laughs> I did. I have, I think maybe the last time we're going to see oh, this for a while tonight. So I promise you after tonight, it's going off until brilliant. next Christmas. <laughs> Is there anything else anybody would like to add? Um, I think a lot of this stuff will be adding like the share the love campaign into the marketing uh, section or events, whichever it fits into. Um, the other thing is uh, I had 7.2. I had purple Hills 10 by 10 program. Unfortunately, um, Nobody from the Purple Hills is able to join us tonight, but I do have a bit of an update. So I'll give you the brief rundown that I have of, of an event that they're a program that they're running so we can be up to date. And I think Amanda too, I was wanted to add some things in that you're working on in Clearview. Where would we put that in uh, events? Other business. Other business? Or sure. New business? Well, I kind of realized, Amanda, you may not want to stick around for the whole night. So why don't we put you in events? Okay. And 7.3, I'm going to put you, Amanda, to talk about some of your wildlife programs and things like that, right? Yep. That sounds cool. fine. Awesome. Okay, great. So can we now go ahead and approve the minutes? Oh, sorry, not the minutes, the agenda. Oh. I need a motioner and a seconder. Jen, you want to put the motion forward and who wants to second it? I think Sarah does. I have <laughs> Councillor McKechnie raising his hand. Oh, did he yeah, his hand? Oh, okay. I didn't see it. Okay, apologize. Okay, great. So um, disclosure of pecuniary interest in nature thereof. Is there anybody that at this time would like to declare anything? Worry, we can we can also accept this throughout the meeting. So I'll just leave that open as well for anyone who wants to um, talk about that. Um, okay, so approval of the minutes from last week, or sorry, last month. Uh, can you get one who's read the minutes that would like to put that motion forward? Heather? I have I've reviewed and approved the minutes from the last meeting. Okay, great. Do we have somebody who's interested in seconding that motion? Anyone? Oh, sorry. Sarah and Sarah. Sarah. Oh, great. So we've got lots of folks who have read the minutes this week, so thank you. Um, and everyone is... Um, in favor of that, do we have anybody who's against? Anybody all in favor of the minutes? I think I pretty much saw everybody raise their hand. Okay, perfect, so that's carried. So business arising from the minutes. Okay, stand by for you guys uh, in uh, tourism. This will take a, hopefully not too long. <laughs> Santa float, this has been on our agenda since uh, March. It's been a really fun topic. Um, here's the update. We had somebody who has a barn locally here in Cremor who's offered us space in their barn. So mm -hmm. the float has now been put away in somebody's barn. Thank you. It's there until spring. And thank you, Darcy Q, um, mm -hmm. who helped manage all that. I give her all the credit. She stepped up and she you know, met with these people and she got the, the float moved. The float is now safely there until spring. It's has some damage from being out in the weather elements for a while, but she's agreed to try to um, try to fix it and try to renovate it a bit for next year. So thank so, you. Thank it's you, just there till the spring? 
that's what she said. She's going to go in there in the new in the spring when it's warmer into their barn and she's going to renovate it in the barn and then we're, we'll see from there. But for, for now, at least. But it can live there for. OK, and is it rent free? Yes, as far as I understand, I think we might want to give them a gift or something, but yes. Sure. Sarah? Does that mean now that I can disperse the $2,000 that we had talked about to uh, John Harper? Uh, should I make a motion to disperse the $2,000 to pay for the float to John Harper? Maybe. Um, it's did funny, we did pass a motion saying that we would we, we, if we were able to find a location to store it that we would pay John for the float. So do we need to pass another motion if we already said that? Um, I, I don't think so. I, I don't I, think so. You've already passed the motion and it was already budgeted for. So I think perfect. you're okay. Okay, then I, I am going to go ahead and do that. That's what I thought. I just want to be sure. Okay, I will uh, write him a check. I think the mechanical reindeer are still in his barn. I don't really understand all the ins and outs, but I think Darcy could give me a better update on that, I'm sure. And if you're talking to her, we'll understand that. But I understand that reindeer are still okay in his barn. It was the big sleigh that we had to worry about. Oh, the discussions of the other ins and outs of the Santa Claus sleigh. But for now, I, think I have I have an update more than we've had in months. So thanks to Darcy. And now onto the Easter Bunny. Yeah, right. So um, I have 5.2 here is the payment options POS for BIA. I don't know, Sarah, if you have an update on that or we should just sort of move that out for a bit. Yeah, we're gonna work on just getting the levy stuff organized. Um, and then that that, the once Kelly, Kelly and I will be talking throughout the POS or throughout the levy stuff. And then I'll also talk to her about that. I mean, yeah. maybe with Amanda here, I don't know if she's had other uh, organizations that have moved to using Square or other POS um, systems that can be deposited straight into a Clearview bank account. But uh, that's something that we're, we're trying to figure out right now. In the past, we've been told we can't. So we're looking for some direction there. But I will be talking uh, more to the Treasury Department about stuff so that will be on our list. And Heather, can you give us an update 5.3 on any billboards you were working on on Airport Road? Somebody give me a tip on how I can connect with uh, Cindy Gordon. Oh, okay. Yep. I'm, so what happened is, is my success is actually knocking on the store door and going in, but she hasn't been in the store. So since like that was two, that was three, three meetings ago and I've been trying to get in, but we've had this lockdown. So I haven't been able to, I go specifically on Saturdays to Creemore to get to that door, but it's not open. Okay. And you need a phone number, Heather? I have a phone number and I have an email. Oh, and she's not replied? No, no. Might be one of those situations where it's going into her spam. I do, oh. she's great to talk to when I get her in person. Okay. So we're just, uh, does Jen know that discussion about the billboards? No. The entry, the south entry to um, Cremor on uh, George? Yep. You know those terrible looking billboards? So that's her property. She, okay. So she owns those. And well, I've been getting pushed to update the Cremor billboard, plus everything else is out of date there. Um, and I, Happy to work with her to get it a little bit to maybe get it landscaped or get a light a light and some new artwork um and to even help get the people um it's just been the communication has been really tricky okay if if she comes in do you want me to yeah if there's any tips on bill we can move on any of okay. it or maybe even just pass her heather's name and just sort of mention that heather's yeah. trying to get in touch with her reaching out Okay. She, might, she knows I, I approached her before because I found out that it was her land, which is, I, I don't know why I'm surprised, um, but she just didn't know what to do with that space. And I said, we'll help you. Okay. <laughs> I'll get you money for those billboards. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Because I, 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 so I talked to her because I have one there that it still says sovereign, right? And yeah. so, uh, and so he said, somebody approached me, but uh, it's like, you know, we have to talk about nobody ever paid anything for that. And we've been paying taxes. So, okay. 
looking, so I'm pulled up there. Uh, believe me, like I, it's it's, I, I I love her with my whole heart, and it's it's just uh, so it's things are not moving <laughs> enough in believe me, even in our department here. Okay, so and so so don't be surprised that by by no responses, which uh, you know, but yeah. uh, but that's that's that was that's after, after we talked. I, just you grab her when you see. Her. <laughs> Okay. That's good. Thanks for the update. Okay. Are we okay to move on from that for now and just sort of leave that as yes. an agenda for next next month? It's still top of thoughts. Okay, perfect. Okay. Um, street <laughs> for update. Um, in Nancy's absence, Sarah, would you have anything you want to add about that right now? Because Sarah's sort of tag teaming this with Nancy and me. Yeah, so we're in conversation still with Heidi. We have given her a uh, a possible budget and she's supposed to be getting back to us with materials uh, a calendar um, of all of the activities ways that we can um, offset some costs if we can find um, some helping hands that sort of thing so I should have a full um, report to bring to our next planning session and then that should inform the budget um, but we're very excited to work with Rural Roots they are right around the corner from us um, I know that she's been an important part of beautifying downtown Stainer she has a lot of experience and she is really invested in the community um, we also are excited because she is looking at getting the planters on the street earlier and we'll need to communicate um, with township staff about how we're going to manage that because those planters are more than any of us can handle and they are sitting on the library land so we're going to have to kind of up our communication um, there over when we had the smaller planters. So that's kind of where we sit um, right now. So um, I do, if anybody wants to see it, I have some emails back and forth, um, kind of giving her some of the guidelines. I think Lori and Nancy are both really familiar with those, but just sort of talking about sharing our narrative of being an agricultural community and kind of ecologically driven and also um, enhancing some of our local uh, features this year kind of focused on the lavender farm. So that's that's where we're at. And I, uh, I think we're in good shape. So too, that's great, Sarah. I think this is the earliest we've ever sort of organized all this. So it's fantastic. All the right. other thing we need to do too is, um, sorry, the other thing that we will be doing is um, Heidi will be providing us with a maintenance, uh, a recommended maintenance chart. And yeah. then from there, we need to do sort of a request for a uh, proposal or we need to seek right. some different people to actually service the um, the planters too, just to see who's out there to make sure that they're, they're well um, maintained this year. It's watering, deadheading, all those sorts of services is what we're looking for. Yeah, and also just, yeah, some real clarity in terms of what we want included in the contract, that sort of thing. So that's something else we're working on. And that's maybe something we can look at with Amanda and Terry too at the Clearview Township and see where you guys are at in terms yeah. of, of services. That's a really good idea because um, maybe what, that's why I'm hoping like Heidi can give us kind of a rundown of everything we need to do. And then we can go looking for how and who are the, the parties that are gonna provide those services. Perfect. Okay, well, that's great. Okay, so now we're going to switch gears and we're gonna move into events. So Brandon, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we have the first thing on our agenda today is 7.1, which is Simcoe County Tourism ride Simcoe County. Um, Brendan, I'll let you introduce yourself um, with your title and what you do and tell us a little bit more. I don't think you've ever been to one of our meetings. So just for the folks here, just to know more, I know you know a lot of people here, but just in case, give us yeah, a totally. update. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, so yeah, Brendan Matheson, I'm an experienced development coordinator for tourism in Simcoe County. So um, I like to refer to myself as the outdoor guy um, because my main pillar of expertise is outdoor tourism. So uh, uh, most notably would be the Cycle Sunco strategy, uh, which I developed back in 2013 and have been working on ever since. 
Um, and then I also have some coworkers that uh, focus more on like culture tourism or agriculinary. So that's just kind of how we, we break up our roles. So yeah, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about motorcycle. And um, I hear you have some concerns and you want to just chat it through. So I thought I'd start by just presenting um, just a bit about my intentions with, with the project and then we can go from there if that works for, your, for everyone. Yeah, sure. That'd be great. Cool. All right. So this is a bear with me. Um, I usually use teams. And so I've never presented a PowerPoint through zoom. So I screwed this up a few times. Just, just tell me. No judgment from us. All right, cool. Good. <laughs> You're very patient with my bad zoom skills. Usually. <laughs> Lori's getting much better. Yeah. It's only taking uh, nine months. All right. So you can see what I see. Oh, that's the question. It's like one of those um, cliche things. It's what we all say now. Can you see this? Mm -hmm. You can see my presentation though? Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Okay. So I've basically taken um, a two hour presentation from BC Hughes and they're sort of, um, there are consultants on this whole project and I've tried to put it in 10 minutes. So I'll go as quick as possible. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate the time. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Based on what you're saying about uh, last night's meeting. So yeah, so I've uh, and a little bit about the project. Um, we've been going to consumer shows. Oh yeah, yeah, my, my headshot. This is, um, uh, yeah, this might be my new Instagram <laughs> photo, I think. But uh, uh, yeah, so, so we, um, we've been getting a lot of requests for a motorcycle guide um, at consumer shows, uh, the outdoor adventure show, cottage life show. Uh, we've got all these cycling brochures, fishing, paddling, um, you know, agritourism, St. Sinners, um, but uh, people are wondering and requesting a motorcycle guide. So uh, with COVID and everything going on, we haven't been able to market this year outside of Simcoe County. So our budget's been spent on shop local campaigns, which has been really effective, I think uh, really important, but we also have a bit of budget for developing new products. So we're ready to, to um, uh, ready to rock post COVID essentially. Um, so we hired BC Hughes um, and that's Chris Hughes there. So he's developed most of this, the uh, motorcycle tourism strategies throughout Ontario. Um, and he's had a great deal of um, uh, success. He's got a ton of stats, a ton of examples of what works and what doesn't. So we hired him to develop our uh, motorcycle tourism strategy for Simcoe County. Obviously the goal, and this is my goal for, I probably should live with this mic. Our goal at Tourism Simcoe County is really just to get um, visitors here that maybe wouldn't have visited Simcoe County otherwise. Um, so we'll target certain demographics to get them here. We developed the routes, like cycling routes. We'll use Cycle Simcoe as an example because it really is quite similar. Um, we developed the routes, but really the goal is to get here, people here so they can ride from Collingwood to Creamore, stop at coffee shop, stop at the brewery, stop at the store, shop around. We want them, the goal, our goal is to get people to spend money. So that's that's our mandate for the motorcycle guide as well. It's not just to ride your motorcycle, eat your sandwich that you brought with you and leave. We want them to come here and spend money. Um, sorry, I just got to move the camera here. Uh, so outcomes, best in class rider experience and engaged business community and cash in your pockets, as I was just sort of talking about. Um, the steps, so we're already pretty far into the process. So we've already done the research, which I'll show you some examples. We dealt, developed some draft routes, which I'll also show you. Uh, we've mapped the routes, the draft routes on a Google platform. That's kind of how we're gonna launch it is, uh, we're not gonna print the guide the first year. We want all digital so we can work out any kinks. So we'll start with a Google map. Um, we've hosted a motorcycle market, uh, readiness workshop. We hosted that a few weeks ago and now we're in, uh, phase five and phase six. So just, uh, trying to build our inventory of operators and, uh, then provide some coaching. So when we do finally launch this post, uh, pandemic, uh, operators will be ready to, to welcome, uh, the motorcycle market. So what is motorcycle tourism and who are they? So um, this is a good opportunity to explain that we're not looking to promote uh, a bunch of motorcycle rallies. You know, we're not looking for that stereotypical 
a uh, horde of bikers or gangs or what have you. We're really just looking for people like this. Um, you know, retirees, baby boomers, couples, um, you know, here's another example as well. So just, just uh, small groups or couples that are looking to get away from the weekend. Our market's usually GTA, Quebec, um, and we really are looking for more of that demographic, so smaller groups. It is, when I start going through some of the research, you'll see it's actually quite similar to our cycling tourism friends in a lot of ways, the, the demographic or the type of person that we're going to be targeting through videos and marketing and images and digital ad campaigns. Um, here's an example of a photo. Uh, we did a photo shoot this past fall. Um, and uh, this person here with the side bags, that's the kind of person we're after, you know, come up for a multi-day tour. Um, they've got plenty of room to purchase stuff and take it home with them. Uh, so that's kind of who we're targeting. Uh, so I'll talk to you really quickly just about some, some demographics or who, who we're after. Um, this again is, is research through BC Hughes and um, you know, $1.5 billion is spent throughout Canada and there's 236,000 registered motorcycles in Ontario. So we're, we're trying to grab some of that market as well as the Quebec market as well, which isn't identified here. Demographics, very similar to cyclists who, um, well, actually the only difference is that the majority of uh, folks riding motorcycles uh, are male, but they are noticing the female ridership increasing, whereas cycling is more 50-50. Uh, they say the average age is 39, but I'd say 39 and up. Um, most of the images we're grabbing are of those that baby boomer um, demographic. Uh, average household income is basically spot on the same as cycling, which is uh, 95,000 a year. Um, some more stats here. So 76% 76 of uh, motorcycle riders take at least two trips per year. 40% of those trips are taken with passengers. So that's that, that couple that we're looking for. That's more energy and that, you know, if you start advertising in the GTA, that's the kind of image that we're going to try to portray. 91% uh, of those trips are self-organized, hence the, the need for this uh, map uh, for those self-guided, self-planned trips, the multi-day trips, which we're after. Um, riders typically ride approximately 300 kilometers per day. Um, that's, and I'll show you the routes in, in, in a sec here, but we are really trying to get after that multi-day um, rider. And they spend up to $200 uh, per day in US dollars. This, <laughs> I was going to leave this out, but this is, I just like this, it's funny. So, you know, we are after the multi-day uh, rider, similar to cycling. We're looking for uh, multi-day trips. Uh, and that kind of bike packing or motorcycle bike packing is, uh, you know, they don't bring much with them. And as Chris Hughes puts it, they bring their visa card and a change of underwear, which probably isn't too far off. Uh, some future trends that Chris has identified uh, targeting the boomers is obviously, as I've mentioned a couple of times, is going to be our main focus. Uh, and there's a huge increase in female ridership. So we really want to portray that, that, you know, getting couples up here. A uh, little bit about Ride Simcoe County, uh, which we sort of loosely branded as Ride Simcoe County, uh, still working on it. Um, so our goal, we're gonna start with Simcoe County, but this is a partnership with RTO7 or Regional Tourism Organization 7, which I'm sure you've heard that term. Um, so that's Bruce County, Gray County and Simcoe County. They're interested in partnering with us on this. We were just, ready to pull the trigger on developing the product in 2020. Um, so we took it upon ourselves to be that pilot project. So we're starting in Simcoe County, but we really want to partner with Gray County and Bruce County so we can extend those overnight stays. Um, just important to know that we really are looking to, yeah, to increase visitation, increase spending, but we're partnering with the other counties. So here's route number one, uh, it's a big loop. So this uh, touches on the Creamore area, it's 400 kilometers. Um, this is basically countywide, this one. And we're gonna actually have, um, um, uh, what are we calling them? Um, we're having basically, um, oh crap, I've lost the term, but we're gonna have routes into the county 
um, from outside Simcoe County. So we're going to recommend taking those quiet side roads from outside the county into the county as opposed to going on 400. Uh, the purpose for doing that is we, we want to encourage people to bike from Toronto up to Simcoe County, then do the loops, and we want them to stay in night somewhere. Um, yeah, so that's that's the whole purpose there. We also have the shoot loop, which is more east. It doesn't really affect you guys too much. And then we have the Saints and Sinners loop. So this is going to be uh, in sort of a partnership. We might change the name of it, but for now, Saints and Sinners is our brewery, uh, winery, and cidery tour. Um, uh, there was some concerns about, we were like, we don't want to encourage drinking and driving, but this is actually going to be more like, take it, take the drinks for apres, but we want you to fill up your saddle bags uh, for after, but just um, um, check out all, because we have so many brewers and cideries and wineries around, and the Saints and Sinners has been a proven successful project, so we want to kind of leverage that. Um, almost done, don't you worry. Um, okay, so, so far, since our motorcycle readiness workshop, um, I'm really impressed with the amount of businesses who have taken the initiative to register their business um, and go through the process of becoming certified as motorcycle friendly or motorcycle ready. Um, so we have 11 attractions, uh, we have 20 accommodators, 16 restaurants, and then 16 rest areas, which includes visitor information centers. Um, and just so you can get an idea of how impressive that is, uh, year one of Cycle Simcoe back in 2013 had 21 businesses in the first year. So this is kind of blown that out of the water. Um, just shows the interest um, countywide. So then that, that goes right from east to west, north to south of, of Simcoe County. Um, okay, riding in Creamore. So um, first of all, I, I got your letter. Um, I understand that you have concerns about uh, noise and so forth, which I'm sure uh, you're eager to tell me a little bit about. Um, based on the letter that you wrote, we did our best to comply. Um, I know Clearview had mentioned that, you know, and we agree, we can't exclude businesses. So if a business wants to be involved in the program as a county of Simcoe, we, we can't exclude them. Um, so it's just important to know that it's, um, that's just where we have to, we have to stand on that. Um, we did take Creamore, like of the, the village of Creamore out of the map. Um, so routes won't go downtown Creamore. So we took out Mill Street and uh, Caroline and just correct me if I'm wrong, but I think those were the two streets leading in that you wanted excluded. Um, we tried our best and I'm, I'm not lying here. We tried our best to um, bypass County Road. Um, we ran into a lot of issues. There's a lot of dirt roads. We, we didn't want to um, uh, uh, take away from the integrity of the loop itself. We wanted to still hit up the escarpment area. Uh, we're trying it around. We couldn't successfully do that unless we went into Dufferin County, which creates a whole slew of issues for us. Um, so we're kind of forced to, to keep County Road 9 um, just so we can, as I said, kind of maintain that integrity of, of the loop. But um, so we're trying to, we, we tried our best to kind of um, uh, to meet your requests, but, uh, and we did the best we, we could, but that's kind of where we stand at this point. But we are willing to work with you if there's other ideas where we can manage um, your concerns. I'm, I'm all ears to, to attempt or try new new options. So um, yeah. Anyways, with that, all that said, that's, that's pretty much it. So uh, I guess I can open up the floor to questions once I figure out how to stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Brandon. That was really helpful, and thank you for just giving us the highlights. I think that was really great. Um, <laughs> Heather, no has a, I see you're kind of raising your hand. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you were kind of waving or. <laughs> yes, well, um, thanks, Brendan, for that presentation. Um, I think it's great that you took in consideration um, the comments and concerns that the village of Creamore had. Um, with them, I just knowing that I, uh, Creamore Springs is a partner with the program, um, and the program is not 
showcasing um, advertising Mill Street as a route. Um, how do we comply? How do we be friendly with the, the concerns of the BIA with that? Is it just it becomes a dot versus a, a road map? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. So so we'll we'll have locator dots. Um, and BC Hughes right now is working on um, business descriptions for every business that becomes motorcycle friendly. So you'll have a locator dot, um, but we won't have a direct route to the brewery itself. It's kind of a compromise. <laughs> yeah, and you know, as I as I mentioned, it's um it, it's it's tricky because you know as as a as a taxpayer, we are obligated to you know work with you and. And if you want to list it, I, I don't have the right to say say no to that. That's just the that's just the sort of yeah. So Heather, yeah. did you have a follow up comment? And then I Sarah. Okay, so it's just another question with the map, um, and I can't see it up close on there. But I, I wanted to know if there was other um, villages that are similar to Creemore that they run through, and just have if there's any concerns from those ones. Um, I know that. The village of Creemore is unique in size and lots of the um, areas in um, other towns in Simcoe County is quite a lot bigger. Um, just curious if there's any other spots that are hit that are similar. Good question. I actually, um, I reached out to Chris Hughes. He hasn't gotten back to me yet. I was interested in knowing as well. Um, but I can say that Coldwater uh, has really embraced it. We mentioned that we're going to do a, a photo shoot. We're launching this and they <laughs> M's Cafe in Coldwater, which is a huge, it's similar. It's, it's a huge cycling destination because of, it's just a quaint town, right? Like it's just, it's what cyclists are looking for and off the beaten track a little bit, similar to Creemore. And, um, and when we told them about the motorcycle guy, it literally went, I think an hour or two before opening and blocked the, of the coffee shop so we could roll up with motorcycles and take a photo out front like that <laughs> it, it's just yeah yeah they're excited about it so um i don't think it's hard to compare with with creamore it's it's quite the gem um of a town and we also really have the, the yeah. or people residents that line the street right the main street and i'm not sure if that is what cold water looks like either i don't never been to cold water really you should you should check it out it's not quite creamore don't put that on record but <laughs> uh, um yeah, totally. It's it's yeah. Res, it's a small. It's it's basically you got your downtown. All the residents uh, wrap the downtown and and okay. yeah yeah yeah. It's 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 quite a little town, but they seem to be embracing it as 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 an example. But um, like I said, um, the amount of of buying we've had has been pretty exciting. It's, like I said, it exceeded uh, cycle some go by it's almost tripled. And um, we're still we're still recruiting right now, which is kind of cool. uh, Sarah. Did you have a comment you wanted to add? I, I did. I just I I thank you for listening to the concerns. We just in our BIA we and in the community we just we get a lot of complaints. So we just thought it best to to say that we know that this is going to be a reality for us. That we're mm -hmm. going to hear these complaints and that we we wanted to just mitigate it and from the get-go so thank you so much for listening to us and I totally get it like you can't avoid county road nine and I think people living on that road have come to to terms with with traffic in general other um I'm just wondering if there's anything you guys are doing in terms of educating people when they do come to small communities on motorcycles within the context of the promotion. And then also if there's any kind of infrastructure in terms of signage, idling is a big concern that we heard about from our residents, that sort of thing. So when you're doing these programs and you're doing the promoting, how can we also ensure that we can turn to our residents and say, yes, you know, here's some things that we're doing in order to, to, to change the behaviors that are upsetting to you and and then we at least can say we're trying to kind of meet the needs of of the of the uh, tourism and all of this great stuff coming into town and making money but also making certain that our residents are, are happy because the space that i mean i feel like you guys in particular you know as government should be really concerned about our residents when you when you do these tourism initiatives yeah, for sure. And um, actually, it's a good point. I probably should have had a slide on that because um, 
when this first uh, uh, came to us, um, we were, that's, that's totally, it was like, what can we do for signage? That's, that's an easy win or, or messaging on the map, on the website. So if we're running a digital adver advertising campaign, running it back to our motorcycle page, can we have some verbiage in there, you know, be mindful of or something? I'm not sure what that looks like yet, but we're in a good position where BC Hughes um, is under contract till at least the spring. So I, I brought that up with BC Hughes. They're gonna try to do some research. What's, what have other uh, communities or other counties what have they implemented for those types of things like no idling or, you know, respect residents and that. So we'll work with him and, and, um, and he, he'll come up with something for sure, but we'll definitely, definitely include some sort of, some sort of messaging. If you have any suggestions or if you've seen anything other communities have done, uh, please, please share. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thing I should say, um, we were talking about the signage thing, and um, and Chris is not to say that we can't do signage because we can, we definitely can. Um, but we just want to be careful with the language we use. We don't want to promote this motorcycle guide, and then someone's coming into Craymore, and we're saying, "Oh, we don't," you know, some sort of negative messaging towards motorcycles might be kind of like a contrast. So we got to think of like a fun, cheeky way of. of of making it a bit more positive. That's kind of just something that, that we need to do. But yeah, I'm not sure. Does that answer your answer your question? Yeah, I'm happy to see you guys are taking those steps. For sure. And you know what? It's just like I, we learned so much so many lessons with cycling. It, it's uh the whole share the road thing. You know, we want to bring cyclists here, but then there's <laughs> yes, motorists and residents are saying cyclists take up too much space. So then we put share the road uh videos out. And it's just sort of a it's going to be a, it's going to be a bit of a journey and honestly if 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 you notice anything um you have my email i mean reach out anytime my other question is what role going forward when you guys are developing programs like this like we are a committee of council we are about promoting our small town what role can we play early on to help you guys when you're developing a plan like this i hear about research but i don't hear about you know the bi we're we're the only bia in clearview like wh when do when can we help and can we do it earlier next time sure yeah yeah i mean um i think um uh, i mean i'm trying to think through my process here so um you know we saw an opportunity we we did the research um at a provincial level that's how we can kind of test the market like okay this is going to bring this could bring revenue to businesses in Simcoe County. We saw it as a great opportunity, uh, um, but for sure, uh, I think when it comes to something like the Motorcycle Ready Workshop, uh, it'd be great to have you involved. And you can voice your concerns or your suggestions directly to the, in this particular instance, the, the consultant that's managing the program. I don't know if that's a great solution, uh, I, we also, um, yeah, I go ahead. Say, um, a few other opportunities would be if members of the Creamore BIA um, would join in on the Tourism Simcoe County newsletter. Um, they're very, very good communication strategies and updates come out of that. And you can simply um, contact uh, Tourism Simcoe County directly by emailing tourism at simcoe.ca. At simcoe um, so I highly recommend anybody interested uh, receives the updated newsletters. And it's I do right my on the web page too. Community. Yeah, exactly, thank you. It's right on their web page. It's on numerous um, Experience Simcoe County Facebook and Instagram um, updates and accounts. So I would say that's probably, don't rely necessarily on me. I do my best at communication. Uh, so thank you and I apologize if anything does slip through, but it's best if you get it directly from the newsletter as well. Totally. And one more opportunity would be our partner meeting, which we run. So, I mean, not everyone needs to jump on that call, but it is open to the public. That's where we launch our annual grant information. So we go through the guidelines, but it's an opportunity for um, all the tourism experience development coordinators to go over their um, intentions for that year. So their, their own work plan. Um, so that just passed. It's usually a January meeting, but I would say that's another good opportunity. Okay, thank you. Um, 
Does anyone else have any comments? Oda or Jen, you guys haven't uh, spoken up. Did you want to comment on anything? No? Okay. Um, thank you, Brendan. I think um, you heard us and, and I think that was the purpose of uh, bringing you here tonight. We just wanted to express some of our concerns. Certainly we are a motorcycle destination and we won't stop being a motorcycle destination. We understand that it's important to certain businesses in this community and we in no way want to stop that or to make motorcycles feel they're not welcome here. I don't think that was ever our intention. We are in a way inundated in the summer with motorcycles, maybe more so than a lot of um, Simcoe County uh, towns. I don't know if you've been here on Saturdays in uh, the summer, but we do get upwards of 100 motorcycles here. So so we are already there. So we just sort of felt like we're running at capacity here with motorcycles and for us to bring even more in and for Sarah and I and some of the members here to get so many letters and so many upset complaints. We've had people say they want to move off of Mill Street. Um, I have some elderly neighbors that are really upset. I've received letters from other residents. So, you know, we're getting that quite a lot. So we felt that we had to really stand behind our community. And so that's where we're at. We understand that we need to support the businesses as much as possible. And we are 100% for that. It was just that we felt that, you know, adding more to what is already overwhelming is hard for us as well with all the complaints we get from our residents. So please understand that that's our position. We're not um, trying to say you should do this program. I think it's a great program. I think you'll probably be very successful in most of Simcoe County. And I like that you've taken account the roots and you've really listened to us. And we really, really appreciate that because I know we're just a tiny, tiny drop of Simcoe County tourism. Like we're just so minuscule for you guys. So we do appreciate that. So that I think um, that's a great way of working together. We hope that in the future we can not have to go to the level that we had to write a letter and take it to council and things. We hope that maybe we can kind of have these conversations privately. Um, you know, like Sarah said, maybe at the beginning, or if you're not sure about stuff, like we, we, we have a lot of experience from tourism because we're on the ground, right? We're here, we're working every day. We do a lot of events in this town and we do a lot of stuff. So we know what works for us. And so we're happy to provide as a resource or information or bouncing off ideas or picking up the phone. I think it's great that we open the channels of communication. So. Thank you very, very much. That was great. Does anyone have yeah. any comments for Brendan or Brendan, would you like to kind of wrap up? Yeah, I don't know. I'll, if anyone has any questions, uh, if you have any sort of suggestions or if you notice anything uh, that other communities are doing as far as messaging, um, just let me know. But yeah, for sure, we, we definitely have signage and um, without a doubt, we will include some sort of um, uh, courtesy type messaging within within any of the written content so but yeah, yeah more out. everybody understands where everybody else is in this program I think it will just go a long way if our residents feel that you know we've asked the motorcycles to be sensitive and the motorcycles take on a bit of that sensitivity then I think we can all meet in the middle and be very successful awesome okay well thanks everybody have a have a great rest of your you too <laughs> take care Brendan yeah. okay bye now um, Amanda, are you still here? Okay, good. <laughs> You're still here. Um, I hope I can, I'm going to turn it over to you now. I'm going to skip over the Purple Hills 10.10 .10 and uh, go for you, Amanda, because you have some interesting programs coming up and I thought you might want to just highlight some of those. Uh, we don't have to go through them in a lot of detail, but I think it's good just to give us the sort of highlights of what you're doing for Tourism Clearview. For sure. Um, thank you so much, Lori. So um, yeah, one of the opportunities that we're promoting right now, it's called Wild About Winter. And how it came about was Georgian Bay Wildlife, which is a tour company um, based out of Glen Huron. Um, they do predominantly um, in past years, so before COVID, major um, tourism for bird watching and wildlife tracking and identification and their target market is typically American and international visitors so the likelihood of the common you know Clearview resident being familiar with Georgian Bay wildlife is is probably pretty low um, because their audience is typically Germans um, French travelers American travelers Quebec travelers etc Anyways, how this partnership came about was Georgian Bay Wildlife was looking for a new platform, a new audience to promote bird watching, identification and tracking. And they um, came to came to me. I have a relationship through the Glen Huron Inn. Um, it's a husband and wife partnership. So uh, the Glen Huron Inn, um, I'm 
very well familiar with their programs and what they run out of um, their bed and breakfast. So working with them and Georgian Bay Wildlife, we have developed and launched a four week series. And Wild About Winter is about educating um, our local residents in Clearview, but also obviously anyone in the Simcoe County, South Georgian Bay area about getting outside and discovering um, animals and birds in their own backyard. So what it entails is uh, it started last week, February 5th. It's every Friday. Um, there's a blog post on discoverclearview.ca. We've partnered up with 95.1 The Peak FM to do radio interviews on Friday mornings to um, present the different animals and wildlife, um, as well as this Friday, February 12th, we're doing uh, Wild About Birding. It's a birding, wa bird watching and bird identification webinar free um, for anyone to participate. Uh, and it's to kick off the Great Backyard Bird Count, which is an international um, four day event that happens every year and it's about tracking and identifying birds and what's really great is in Clearview Township we wanted to take this opportunity to get our residents out exploring parks and trails nearby it's definitely been something that I've been promoting during this whole COVID pandemic time frame is what are the easy outdoor activities that you can do with your own household bubble um, so it was a Good partnership. It also is giving Georgian Bay Wildlife an opportunity to pilot and to experiment different avenues of pivoting their own um, organization. Um, so basically, I had just asked Lori for just a few minutes just to talk about it, um, to find out um, or to let you know how you can find out more. The other great thing is that Andrew Major, who's the wildlife technician wildlife he has been writing articles last was the first one for the in the more echo and again that's just another avenue for them to get their message out and for them to talk about um, birding and identification and tracking um, in clear viewship in the area we've created a couple um, free resources there's a common birds of simcoe county checklist that people can download there's the free webinar like i mentioned for um, high school students uh, they can actually earn volunteer hours by participating in the great backyard bird count this weekend um, that's actually a really good opportunity because a lot of our youth from the youth center have indicated to us that they haven't been able to get their volunteer hours. Uh, there's no events happening. Um, some of the service clubs have shut down. The typical ways that they get those volunteer hours um, are just not existent. So the Great Backyard Bird Count, because it's run by Birds Canada, which is a registered not-for-profit organization, um, they're able to sign off on those volunteer hours. We have the partnership with the Youth Centre. And the other last part too is with Clearview Township, we've just been looking for new programming opportunities. Normally I'm not in the rec program um, field. I stick to events and tourism um, and marketing, but in this case, uh, providing uh, you know, opportunities for people to participate in recreation and, and to get outside was really important. And bird watching and tracking identification is a safe and enjoyable activity that could happen during COVID. So it just seemed like a natural um, partnership. So um, once again, uh, thanks for letting me talk about it. It has been very well received. We have most of our promotions is done through Discover Clearview on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on the website. And um, the partnership that we have with the Creamore Echo and 95.1 The Peak FM. So Happy to answer any questions. Um, there's a lot of birding, believe it or not, that happens in Creemore. It's quite surprising. Um, Andrew has um, given me lots of tips. I've probably learned more about snowy owls and juncos and northern cardinals and um, red crested woodpeckers, um, et cetera, as well as a whole bunch of other things. This week's blog is going to be about um, the eastern coyote, um, which is kind of interesting. So it's not just about birding, it's about all wildlife um, that you can hear and see and track in the wintertime. I guess uh, we so gotta bring back bird day. Yeah, I was thinking about that. It works well. Birds are popular. People, in this, like that's where we we do know Creamer loves their birds. Yes, yes we do. That's, 
Exactly. It. And you know, I have to say people have just come out of the woodwork, no pun intended. Um, we did our snowy owl post last Friday. And over the weekend, I probably received about nine or 10 um, either like DMs over Instagram or actual posts on Discover Clearview on Facebook of people taking pictures of snowy owls in their own barns, hydro poles, telephone poles. If I could get that level of engagement on some of our other photo, digital photo entry contests, it would be unbelievable. So um, yes, uh, uh, Creemore in particular and uh, those in the hills um, definitely love their birds and wildlife. Great. So, and I guess the other part too is, you know, a, a longer term vision as you guys are well aware, it is about creating sustainable experiences. Um, it's about making sure that in, especially in South Georgian Bay, um, that certain areas are overpopulated when it comes to tourism. So how do we identify those gems and those other kind of must see destinations that are outside of the heavily populated areas? Um, last summer, we did video campaigns for the Menacing Wetlands. We did the Devil's Glen and the Nottawasaga Bluffs as being two other locations, um, the Eco Park. Uh, Carruthers Park, just outside of Avening, um, the Dunedin Nature Reserve, which most people don't even realize is 56 um, hectares of protected um, grassland and is home to the butternut tree, which is one of the most endangered tree species in Ontario. So um, I guess it just really supports our, um, you know, opportunities to protect those areas. Yeah. It's fabulous you know, because it's hard to during the pandemic and I think uh, I think it looks like a really great program wonderful well thank you and I guess just um to kind of wrap it all up the one thing that our department is willing to do is to continue to support um, businesses who are looking to pivot and to um, try to adapt and evolve um, during not just COVID but also you know beyond we anticipate um, being in a kind of a similar uh, lockdown situation for at least the next three to six months as the reopening framework gets announced. Um, so if there are businesses that you hear that are looking for new opportunities, um, there's a wealth of information that people can connect just directly with me, or again, by following, um, you know, our events calendar, we have all the digital squad webinars posted. I try to keep up to date with all of the Minister McLeod's postings um, and what uh, she, her office is announcing. So um, there are quite a few opportunities available. That's great. That's really great. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Amanda no. while she's here? Any thoughts or final thoughts? Well, keep up the good work, Amanda. This is great. You know what? It's really nice to hear that you're going to be a centralized resource where we can send people who might need some more information about grants or digital service squad. Digital service squad still running. I think we have the use of Ben until the end of February. Yeah, Oda. Yeah, I just want to say that it's like, you know, what a great source of info and, and, and that can comes from you there Amanda and you know and it's it's on time and reminding us of things that we can do and what are what are available and uh, it's you know I really feel very fortunate to be uh up here and uh, and 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 this being our community and 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 this great from, uh, from all uh, all of our friends and uh, and and you know and you know the township and and you guys it just uh, I I really do appreciate it and I, and I and I found it very useful to be honest so I I just googled you know the last time I got the email from you and I was like you know and I'm like it was very useful <laughs> so uh, so it's working hopefully it's working for everybody else so thank you well thank, thank you thank you very much and um yeah again I try to disperse the information as as fast as I can get it um sometimes there's a delay and all I'm doing is just forwarding um, info, it certainly has the Creamer business community has their own Facebook page. I appreciate having rights and access to post and, and to share. So um, I think that helps in terms of communication. But our department is here to help. I know sometimes it feels like we say no, but we say yes a lot as well. So if there are any um, opportunities or challenges, just feel free to 
to reach out myself to Terry or to a member of council and we'll do our best to support. That's awesome. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Fantastic. Okay. So I'm going to release Amanda from our meeting, unless there's anything else you'd like to add. And uh, we will continue on with our agenda. So thanks, Amanda. We'll say goodbye. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Nice to see some friendly faces. Come, come back. Enjoy. Bye. <laughs> okay, bye now. Okay, so I'm going to just hop back over to the Purple Hills 10 by 10. Um, this is something that's a, a Purple Hills Arts and Heritage uh, program. Just going to give you the highlights here. Um, I had invited someone from Purple Hills and I, to, to my fault, really, I forgot to follow up with them. And so I have a bit of information, but it's something that we can probably talk more about in the next meeting. But basically, the Purple Hills is proposing that locals do artwork that is 10 inches by 10 inches square and that they display them in the windows of the stores in downtown Creamore. It's according uh, to this is of Creamore centric for those of you that have been around here for a while, but nothing is for sale. So the idea is it's a bit of an art gallery for local artists who would like to display their artworks in the windows. And um, it's really Creamore Spirit and the Purple Hills Arts and Heritage uh, Society. To, they will organize the whole thing, including the distribution and the pickup uh, to all of the stores. And that what they're looking for from the BIA is to provide some window space. So that's a program that they're putting together in April. And I think it sounds like a nice program. I, I can't see any reason why we wouldn't want to participate. Does anyone have any questions? I'll try and gather some more information or get somebody to come to our next meeting uh, in March so that we can have the details. But I, I think I think it's something, I, unless there's any objections, I think that's something we probably like to be involved with, right? Yeah. Okay. I think it's really great. And I yeah. think- I, I think it's- a yeah, sorry, sorry. I, th I think it's really something that like really works for this uh, for us. I mean, I, I wish I I could do more of that, but with you know placing my patio the way it's been placed, I don't have any window space for anybody. However, um, you know, I think that even putting those things on lights and and kind of this way bringing people in to check the businesses through the websites to see this art artworks might be another uh, kind of way to uh, to to cross promote each other, perhaps. Some of your internet's cutting out a little bit, but what I think I heard was um, that you want to maybe instead of in the windows, you suggest putting it inside on your walls. No, 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 not not just instead of. I know my internet sucks. I can see, but instead of the windows are great, but for those who don't have a windows, perhaps putting it on the websites as well and kind of uh, bring people to the businesses through the internet maybe yep. as well. Good idea. Something we can suggest to them, absolutely. It's a good idea. It fills that. that sorry, oh. Sarah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, the delay is really hard. You go first. Okay, it fills in that April time. It gives us something to really promote after Easter because we kind of talked about that being a quiet mm -hmm. or dead zone. And I think I could help, like I'll be working with Purple Hills in terms of um, drop off and distribution. And so maybe what we can try and do is capture the images and we could use the same um basically just recreate that um valentine's page and if we wanted to we could put the pictures that are at each location or we we could do that if if we feel like people can't get out at the time and have it live um you know i think i would be willing to put some effort into uh, supporting an online element with that nice sorry i'm just taking notes at the same time yeah I, uh, that's a really nice suggestion Okay, I'll take that back to them and hopefully we'll get some more information. I think they're really in the process of just figuring it out themselves. So um, that's that's as far along as, as we have. But I believe that they're gonna give the 10 by 10 canvases out to pretty much anybody who wants one and anybody can create it. And then the idea is it's, you don't have to be sort of like an, an artist. It can be anyone who, who creates these and puts them in the window. So it'll be a bit of colorful and a bit of interest, you know, in a, in a very kind of bleak month of April, which can be very rainy and dark. So, so our artists are not painting this they're handing out a blank canvas 
also, I, I think it's open to everyone. The idea is they're giving everybody like a 10 by 10 canvas and you can <laughs> look at others. <laughs> what? <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> I like, I like the idea of it being already done. <laughs> oh no, we don't have to do it as, as the, as the businesses know, we don't have to do it. it the community community art project oh. so then the community will come pick up the canvas then they'll <laughs> take the canvas away they'll right. paint it and then they'll bring it back and Sign then it up. will be done like, another oh it might I be done by an artist at drawing away on all these <laughs> on the window <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I didn't explain that very well. But yes, thank you, Sarah, for the clarification. <laughs> I feel like this could be similar to um, the art show that they do when they come in on site, right? Sign up. They want to come and hang out. The idea is it's not for sale. So we're just... Right. But the way that it was organized, I feel like it could be organized sort of similar with Purple Hills. Yeah, I think I'll be I'll be working with them to help a little bit with that stuff and what I could also do is just using kind of the same handy dandy uh, sign up sheets that we've been using we can uh, gauge the interest and who is willing to take on canvases and how many and we can do that sooner rather than later because we know the size it might be hard to I don't know how you would administer it because you're going to want to make sure that the businesses like the art that they're going to put in so maybe that's something that we need to talk to Liz about because I do imagine each business will want something that reflects what what they have going on in their windows question again Sarah if with part of the organizing um I'm happy to be um displaying art in the window that's no problem it's just that um our windows with the sunlight kill anything that's in there so I just want that we're happy to take it, but I'm not sure that you want it in full back full when it comes back because we do our stuff gets destroyed in our windows. I think that's really important to tell Liz and their organizing group to ensure that like that they're sun damage. Yeah, like just make sure that it's really clear in terms of who's responsible for the artwork, who's, you know, that sort of stuff, because we certainly don't want our businesses to have people upset with them because they're mm -hmm. trying to do something good for the community. So I think really laying out that in a, you know, obviously in a lovely, pleasant way, but it, we better we better be sure that that's included in their information to the artists. I've taken a note of that. I think that's important. Okay, great. Well, that's the uh, 10 by 10 program. So I've added another section in here, Kayla. I've made a 7.4 and that is uh, Lavender Days. I don't know if we want to add that to the agenda or we want to be able to talk about it. We're going to have another meeting. We Part of our workshop last night for Oda that wasn't able to join us is that we talked quite extensively about this. And um, I think we have a lot more work to do on this before we're able to really come public about sort of our thoughts and where we're at. Um, I should declare a pecuniary interest in conflict of interest though, because I do feel that I do sell some of the products that one of the partners that we're looking at working with. So I do want to declare that and possibly remove myself from the uh, from the committee. So I'm happy to help in, in different ways, but I, I do have to be to be careful about uh, conflict of interest there. Um, okay, so we're going to put that though, we're going to talk a lot more about that in March because what we had decided last night was that we are going to um, meet or the team is going to meet in February and that uh, and that hopefully beginning of March, we'll be able to start to roll that out to the, uh, the members. Anybody have any questions about that right now? Or do, can we, do you wanna just move along? Cause we don't, we don't have a lot of details just yet. It sounds like from our discussion last night. Okay, so public participation, I'm gonna skip through that cause there's nobody here for that. Um, financial report. Sarah, did you want to talk on that? I know you're doing a ton of work on this, especially leading up to our AGM. Yes. And I'm sorry, I've been in touch with Emmy a few times, but I have still haven't got the finals for 2020 from her. So I'll continue. Um, and maybe with Kayla's help, the two of us, I don't know if Kayla has the ability to get these reports faster, but uh, I still need to bring that forward. 
Um, so I don't have a ton to report um, other than I am working on the levy. We did talk a little bit about it at the planning meeting. I have kind of come up with an overview of how to approach the levy. Do we want to go into that? Because what I would like um, is to just get some um, mm -hmm. kind of like a, a motion that I can move ahead with. Um, I guess the last time we, sorry, I have to go back a bit. I'm, I'm exhausted. Uh, the last time we talked at our last meeting, I guess I was to convene um, to gather up a committee and sort of bring together a plan to look at the, um, the levy. So that's what I have done. Um, and uh, I think it should be fairly straightforward. I will be meeting with, um, so our committee is made up at this point of Lori, Pamela Fettis and myself. And what we're going to be doing is, um, sorry, I'm like that, I, I'm like, I can't do two things at once either. <laughs> I'm trying to pull up my screen. So what we have to do is put together some kind of a process to bring the levy to our members and decide what the levy should be. Um, and I think we are kind of getting to the point where we know how that has to happen. So we're gonna be working away at that. What I have done is created, sorry, I should have had this pulled up. Okay. Um, Last night we talked pretty extensively about we talked it. really extensively about it. So what I wanna do is just kind of get this on the record in terms of what we're going to be doing with the membership and how we're gonna go about it. Have your action plan because what we could do is maybe submit that as information. That's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'll just send that in. So, um, so basically, the plan is to uh, ah, what is the plan here? Sorry, guys, I'm um, now I've lost all of the right screens here. Oh, it's <laughs> just so many. This is such a weeny little screen I have on this computer. Sorry, um. I don't even know if I have to share, but basically what we're going to do is we're going through the process where um, what I have learned to date is that in order to change the levy, really, we're, we are able to do that um, as long as we create a budget, um, share the information with our membership, and it is approved by council. So it's a fairly straightforward process. Uh, that might be like the super cool notes on it. But uh, we've created a process that's going to include educating our membership, surveying our membership to ensure that we understand what their needs, uh, abilities and expectations are. And then hopefully at the AGM, we will give a few options and then we'll get some feedback in terms of that before we set our budget for, um, for this year. I'm not certain that we'll be able to change our levy for this year. We will have more information about that tomorrow after talking to Pam. But what I can do is I can, um, I can share our kind of overview plan and then throughout our planning process. Um, like, do I need a, a motion to approve the plan, Lori, do you think? Oh, you, we could uh, accept it, the plan as information. Okay. Uh, Mila, do you, what do you think? Yeah, that's exactly the route I would go, accept okay. it as information. Yeah, because right now it's, um, before I talk to Pam, I, there's some things I'm just not certain about. So I think it'll, it'll get um, a little bit tighter and tidier. And I have shared it with all of the, um, the board members and we can put it in the minutes. So if you guys will receive that for information, then we can move along. Yep, we do. Uh, do we have to put a motion forward or do we just say we accept it? Do you know? Sorry, Kayla? trying to find my my unmute button. Uh, it's long. <laughs> um, yeah, if you guys don't mind, we can just pass a quick resolution that you accept the attached and um, I'll attach it as soon as Sarah has uh, recovered from her technical glitch. <laughs> Well, it's not a technical glitch. It's okay. my brain is just done. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll add it to the minute so there it'll be there. Some people have like accepted. a slow internet connection. I have a slow brain connection right now. That happens as the night gets on. <laughs> we want to put a motion together that says you're presenting the action plan for the levy um, as information to be included in the minutes. Yeah. That yeah, that's a good one. And then do we have a seconder? Somebody who wants this gen, gen, second it, thank you. And uh, all in favor? Okay, great. So that motion is passed and that's accepted as an action plan into the uh, minutes. Thank you. Sarah.
stay tuned. This is a really interesting project and I hope everybody's part of it. And I, I hope that we continue our workshop planning meetings because it's something that's super important and Sarah's done just a ton of research and number crunching and trying to figure things out and read. And so it'll be really interesting. And I think we all need to be part of this. It's not always fun parts that we do in the BIA. It's not all <laughs> events and the singing and dancing on the street, but it's super important for the future of the BIA. And maybe not this group here and maybe in the next few years isn't so important, but future, lot, many, many years into the future, they'll be very happy that we look at this now. Can I just remind, I think I've sent a copy of our uh, the draft survey that I'd like to circulate to our members, to some of you. If you can look at that as soon as possible, that would be really helpful. I um, I, I've had, there's been one response, so. Yeah, did it. it was good. Yeah, okay, good. I'm looking forward to getting some feedback on that. My notes in the, you know where you put the section where you put your comments? All yeah. my notes what I thought you should change are in there. Brilliant, thank you. I will take a closer look at that tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, great, cool. All right, can we move on from the levy discussion, Sarah? Or yeah, time? oh please, yeah. Great, so I'm gonna move into 10.0, which is the marketing. Um, biggest program we have going right now is the Share the Love campaign. So that one um, we're pretty pumped about, we're pretty excited. Can I, I went, I got our stamp. That's oh, great, so there's a stamp coming, this is, been needles wondering when that's going to arrive so great news so the share the love campaign which really started out as a campaign to help boost businesses up for valentine's day which was basically a digital campaign uh digital elements included um including the packages for valentine's day on our internet pay on our website we had a whole page created where people could look at gifts and then go to that particular business and purchase them and then followed by a cute little video that we, we created in the team and put up on Instagram. So um, I don't know, Sarah, I haven't had a chance to look at the, the analytics on the website. I know that Sarah, when we talked last night, you'd said that we have quite a few people going to the website, which is really our call to action is to get people to go to experiencecremore.com. Um, I think as of yesterday, you said there's about 250 people a day which is big. Yeah, I'll look that up while you're talking, while you're sharing, I can look that up. The other parts, the other part we did was we put on, um, on uh, Instagram, on Cremor Ontario, the little video that uh, Travis and I shot and Joey helped as well. So Travis, Joey, and I spent a lot of time figuring out this video and all the technical bits and parts behind it. But today the insights aren't huge. So I'll just share with you guys, and this has never happened before on any of the Cremor assets. But uh, we had 365 likes on the video itself. 52 comments or engagements, 125 shares. And uh, we reached about 1600 people and we didn't boost it. So we didn't pay for anything there. All we did was our time. And uh, turns out we weren't able to boost it right now. We have a few sort of technical glitches to work through, but basically a lot of that drove a lot of traffic to our website. And 20% uh, of those people weren't already following Creamore Ontario. So these are new people that are coming in that are learning about this program and then hopefully going and learning about our shops and our restaurants. And uh, we're pretty excited because that is the most traction we've ever, ever, ever had on any of our social media channels um, ever. So it's, it's big. So we're pretty excited about that. Now the push for this week is about free delivery, talking about how if you buy a package today, you know, you can get it delivered before Valentine's Day or on Valentine's Day. So that's our big social media push today. We still continue with the stories. We still continue with the posts and we'll be continuing those all the way up to Valentine's Day. So that's the exciting part for us is that um, it's really, really working well. So the good news about this too, is that it was a bit of an experiment. We didn't really know what we were doing. Well, I didn't know what we were, I was doing at the beginning. So it was a good learning for, for us as a group, as a team to see how we work together. Also all the technical bits and parts, it, it was really great. So I think during the pandemic, if we are in various different stages of lockdown or gray zones or whatever it is, this is something, this is a model we can use over and over and over again. And last night in our workshops, we talked about using it for Mother's Day, maybe putting Mother's Day packages together for the BIA. We talked about it for Easter. So we'll be using this kind of concept if it's if it's going to be successful. I know Nancy had mentioned in the meeting last night that she had personally sold quite a lot of donuts that, that she had posted up on the website. So people, I'm getting good feedback that people are getting sales, they're getting inquiries, they're getting people come through that, that are asking them. So 
let's keep keep it going and we'll we'll try and figure out all the analytics by the end. Sarah, did you get a chance to look at the website? Um, yeah, so I'm looking at it now. And I think the one thing that we should maybe be doing is I know we have a lot invested in posting to Instagram, but I think we really need to take those same assets and maybe go to Facebook too, because I'm seeing when we posted the day that we put the video up, which was on Facebook, more people are coming through Facebook than Instagram yeah. to actually visiting the website. So if, if coming to the website's the key objective here, then using those assets on Facebook would be a good idea. We did put, like you said, we did put all the video on, on Facebook and we did boost on Facebook too. So we did. Okay. So, but are you going to be putting the rest of the assets on Facebook parallel? Yes. Okay. I think that we're not going to see as much pickup on anything <coughs> like that, that it's, it's the video. So 156 visitors in one day. And I think that was, what day did you release the video? The seventh? Saturday. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but um, it's good. Most people are coming through the social media, but we are getting a lot of people that are, are putting in experience cream or dot com 22% or something of the visitors are doing that. And then some people are just searching cream more. Um, I can send out, we can attach a full analytics. Um, but people are visiting, uh, the, the, they're going directly to that Valentine's page with 402 views of that Valentine's page. So there's definite, and it's, that's, um, that's terrific, I think. I think so too. I think it's really great. So we're pretty proud of that. So that's a great, great program. Does anyone have any other comments they want to share with that or concerns or feedback at this time? No, all good. Okay. So that is that program. And then hopefully when it all wraps up, we'll have all the numbers and analytics to give everybody because we do want to track it. Okay, so that's marketing for now. Um, number 11 is new business, unaccept, uh, unfinished business. Um, I do need to make a motion for a sign variance for one of the businesses that we are going to accept into information into the minutes, if that's okay. Um, does anyone want to make that motion? It's some um, information that Mara had passed to us as notification, and we're just going to accept it that the Clearview Township did notify us and give us the information and we're going to accept it. But because it's a individual business, I'd rather not mention the name here on the, uh, on the public meeting. So um, Kayla, are we okay to accept that information into our, uh, how do you say, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Sorry, I'm, I'm slowly typing it out as I go. So you want to say, uh, be it resolved that the, I don't know why I wrote Clearview, probably because you were talking about that, uh, Cream or BIA yeah. board hereby. Accept some information based on a sign variance. Accept sign variance yeah. information. So. That's all we want to do. Is that uh, as provided by Mara? I'll just say that and then it's a little bit more direction yeah yeah perfect all right so do we have a seconder that we'll just accept that anybody want to second it I can't second it Heather okay all in favor of just accepting that as information yeah okay great so that is carried thank you Okay, that's a bit of administration. And then our next piece, bit of a sad piece I have to add here in new business and unfinished business. Oh, um, wait, Lori, did you want to discuss anything about the Clearview Chamber of Commerce? I have it in my notes here. I knew I could get something. Uh, Clearview Ch Chamber of Commerce reached out to me today and they mentioned that they are, um, they're going to be trying to encourage more businesses to join the Chamber of Commerce. And so they will be coming into Creemore to kind of recruit or encourage businesses to join. And they just wanted to let us know that, that they're going to be kind of in our, in our sort of backyards. So uh, I don't think the problem with Clearview Chamber of Commerce does very different work than we do. And I think they're a great, great group of people. And I don't see that there's any issue, but I said, I'd like to just, you know, bring it up that tonight that, so you guys know that if you see them around or you see them online or, you know, that's what they're doing. They're trying to drum up some new support for their own uh, group and some sell some new memberships and get some more people involved. They also want to work on some new programs for 2021. And they've asked if they can come to our next meeting in March 
So I said, I, I don't see why not. If, uh, if they have some programs that might interest our members, certainly we'd, we'd want to hear about them. So that's, that's sort of where I left it with, uh, with the uh, Chamber of Commerce. If anybody has any questions, the, the uh, contact I have there is Kat Salvador. Um, all right, so I can move on from that. Thank you, Kayla, for reminding me. Yeah, <laughs> sorry I, about cutting you off there. No, no, I had said it earlier, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. So we got that in. And then the last thing is um, Nancy has offered her resignation to the IA board today. So she asked me if I would present it on her behalf tonight. Um, she's just decided that she wants to work on some other projects and would rather not um, be a member of our board, but she has offered her help and assistance and she will still work on programs. And she's still really keen to continue some of the work she's done and she'll volunteer on our committees but she just feels that some of her energy needs to be best spent elsewhere, which I think we can all appreciate <laughs> because all of us are in the same boat. We are all torn into this. And uh, we want to thank Nan for the, I guess, two or three years, I don't know how long we've been doing this, um, all the work she's been doing in the past years and all her work on street decor. I know the street wouldn't look as beautiful if it wasn't for Nancy. So thanks, Nancy, for everything you've done. We're really going to miss you. Um, and uh, we hope to see you around still. <laughs> I'm sure we're all gonna be getting coffee from her every day. Um, so sorry to leave that with you for the last bit because I know that's a bit of a, a, a bit of a shock, but uh, here we are. Okay, so the next meeting is uh, March 9th, 7 p.m. So, oh, and that's our AGM. We will probably need to have another, maybe another meeting in between now and March 9th if we want to go over any sort of final details on the budget for the AGM. I would imagine this group should cast their eyes at least on some of the final budgetary items. And I was going to propose for the AGM as well, based on our conversations last night, that maybe what we are able to do is really talk about the first six months of the year. Because the year is going to be changing so much this year, I don't know if we can really honestly talk from August to December other than big things like possible Santa Claus parade you know I, it's really hard for us because we just don't know where we're going to be with events so I wonder if we just sort of put some placeholders and then we try to roll out what we're doing in the first part of the year I don't know is that acceptable to you guys for an AGM or do you think we should give them the whole year's program and this is what we're doing it's really hard for us to figure it out I mean, it's hard. It takes us a lot of time to do all the planning and all the details of all these events. And it's hard for us to lay it all out, not knowing pandemic wise where we're going to be in June or July or August. So um, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a tricky AGM to, to deal with this year. And there might just be some placeholders and things that are just going to be, you know, hopefully, you know, rolled out once we once we know more, you know, certainly Heather gave me a, and Jen gave me a real insight yesterday about you know June and July maybe not looking so good and not being pandemic wise and not being able to to have the events I was kind of hoping we'd be able to have so um, let's see what we can do for the AGM well we're going to have to be an adaptive year and we're just going to have to be flexible and evaluate month to month what we can do for programs and what we can do for events and what's working and what's not and this is going to be our a really tough year for us as the BIA because we're going to have to not do our regular programs again but just try to keep adapting anybody have any comments questions you want to add anything no all right guys well on that note I think uh, we're going to wrap it up it's hey it's 8 25 so we uh, managed to keep it within a good time frame. Heather, did you have a comment? Oh, no, do you want me to motion to? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, Peter. Yes, we get resolved that the Kimor improvement <laughs> a, uh, meeting is adjourned.